public. Well, let's start with. Okay, we are now recording. Now we're recording. Okay, so the first thing on the agenda will be approving the minutes from our last meeting. Yes, on April first, twenty twenty-four. Okay, everybody had a chance to review those. Yes. Any additions or corrections? All right. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Brings us to number two, our public hearing. I think Oscar, we'll just we do. We have a public hearing for you tonight. All right, let's. Well, we shall open the public hearing. You want me to give you a little brief, real quick, and for the folks in the audience? Sure. Okay. I promise I'll be brief. Uh, this is a piece of property. It's approximately eight tenths of an acre. It's located on Nottoway Avenue. Um, the applicant, Jaysha Cosby, is here and um, has requested the ability to put in a double-wide manufactured home. And as I showed the folks in the audience, her property is actually zoned R2, which does not permit manufactured homes. Mm -hmm. Across the street is R3, where this gentleman lives. It actually does permit manufactured homes, as long, and along with the one that's directly across the street from the subject property on Nottoway Avenue. This is Jerome's property here. It's green. Okay. The gentleman in the audience lives here, and then there's a double white on the corner, and then this, what used to be Colonial Arms Apartments, I don't know what they call them now, but Colonial Arms Apartments that are located on Courthouse Road are here, and then this is the former Pinewood Apartments that I used to live in when I was a young man, and uh, those are also zoned R3. But in order to have a double wide manufactured home we're presenting to you a conditional rezoning which is very similar to what we did on north main street and on uh, forest drive this past year if you remember richard keller was the applicant to put a uh, double mm -hmm. wide in and mm -hmm. it was conditionally rezoned so it's specific to her request which is a double wide manufactured home uh, it won't open it up because of the condition for jaysha to change her mind and decide she wants to put apartments over there that's not the case. It'd be a conditional rezoning rule restricted to one. So show me again where Jerome's I'm property. Gonna back to y'all. Jerome's house is right there in that green block. All right. And where is this in relationship to that? Caddy Corn. Across there. Across the street. Okay. It's a grassy area. All right. Um, and then right across the street from her is this picture here that I sent y'all. Mm-hmm. It was Caddy Corner from Jerome. And then right behind her was this that I sent y'all. And then to the north of it, I guess, is R3 property? Pardon? Uh, to the north of that? To the north, it's all R3 right there. And the thinking behind that, there was apartments in there. This was done back in the 90s. And the town decided to, to rezone that entire block, which doesn't harm you if you get a single family home. You can really, it's the most flexible zoning that the town can possibly provide as far as housing type. Uh, but right across the street is zoned R2, even though there's a single wide manufactured home right here next to it at the corner of Ford Avenue and Nottoway. And I think she sent you a picture. Right. right there. So just the property directly across there from Jerome's, is that owned by Jerome? I think it is, yeah. Behind the guardrail? Yeah. Yep, I think it is owned by Jerome. In fact, he mentioned it to me the other day that he owned it. And then the piece across Fort Avenue is owned, I think Toy Jackson, I think is the name of the owner. And uh, that's certainly lives there, whether it's a rental or not. So. And then this is the next piece. The Jackson property, what, does she have a manufactured home there or a trailer or what's. Which one? Jackson? Yeah. Single wide manufactured home. So. And that's just a grandfather that's been there since. Before I showed up in Blackstone okay. 30 years ago. And it would not be allowed to be replaced. However, we have learned we would have to allow them to put a double white back in. So if that trailer were to ever decide to be replaced, and when I say trailer, proper term is single wide manufactured home. So we don't offend anybody. But just on Northwest Avenue, same thing. There was a single wide manufactured home. The gentleman wanted to replace it. And state code requires us to allow the replacement of a single wide manufactured home 
Well, the double wide would be fine. That's why there's a double wide over there. I think it met its purposes. That's what he wanted to do anyhow. But if Miss Jackson's home, she ever wanted to take it down and replace it, she would be within her right to replace it because of state code with a double wide manufactured home, which would be just adjacent to the property or subject that we're talking about. public hearing. And Ms. Cosby, would you like to speak on this? Well, I don't have too much to say other than it's surrounded pretty much now by what I want to do, if, if I should do that. So I don't see too much reason why it shouldn't go through, not to be rude or anything, but. Would it be similar in appearance to say this? The home across the street. The home across the street? There. Okay. Um, oh, and the other issue we want to address tonight, not only is it conditionally rezoned only to, um, for a single wide, or a double wide manufactured home, but we also, require the, the uh, be a permanent foundation. Okay. And I think we discussed that one time as well. Those would be the conditions. The, does the foundation have to be covered? Is that we, the we idea? We learned a little something too. The building okay. code be not moved. Okay. Okay. As we learned, um, the the masonry paneling mm -hmm. by building code is considered permanent foundation. That's why both of those homes that we see on North Main that we put in and the one on Forest Drive do not have cinder block or traditional masonry foundations. They have the masonry panels. So uh, that would be the equivalent of a permanent foundation. Probably less expensive, I would assume, as well. So. They have a decent appearance about them. Yeah. Okay. The one on North Main is seems tidy, and the one on, on Forest Drive doesn't appear to be awkward-looking or plastic or vinyl okay. skirting or anything like that. Okay, so that's covered by the building code. No, we would have uh, to include that as a part of your condition. Oh, I see. Permanent foundation. Permanent, fa permanent foundation. foundation. But okay. she has the option by building code of either center block, which is a pretty standard what you and I would think yeah. of a permanent foundation, mm -hmm. or with the masonry sheet. Okay. Sheet. All right. Not a problem, I, I assume. Okay. Any questions for her? She could meet all the setback requirements with that. Yeah, it's a pretty big lot. Over yeah. 200 feet of width. So, if you remember, our setbacks are based on 15% of 200 feet. So she's going to have pretty appreciable setbacks because of the width of the lot. Okay, so it's either 15% of the frontage or 12 feet, which is over is more. So she's going to fall on the 15% side. So she'll have to meet those setbacks. But there is a sewer line that runs down in that creek bottom anyhow. So she's going to have to stay on that sewer line no matter what. So um, pretty good size lot, as you can see. I think 220 feet of frontage. Right. Mm -hmm. Must mandated to connect a worm to it. And it will be on the town record. We'll be very happy, I'm sure. Very upset. <laughs> Any questions for her? Okay. Thank you. Any other folks wish to? I'm across the street from it, and I have no problem with it. It's always very important to us to <laughs> make yeah. sure that the neighbors are. And obviously, Mr. Wilson is not he here. Did you receive Close. a letter from her? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Is Mr. Wilson the one that lives? Is that Derek? I think his name's Derek. Jerome Wilson. Jerome Wilson. He oh. lives across the street from you in kind of catty corner, and his house is kind of screened by trees and woods, so he lives back up Moore Street. He's not good with all that. Yeah. Next door to the east side. Yeah, he's across the street. He's in the woodland. Not the other double wide. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> he's kind of. Take it to the regular. Yeah, back there. And he's got plenty of space. And there was not a letter sent to Jerome? 
Well, if there's no okay. further public comment or presentation, we shall close the public hearing. Further discussion? I think with the neighbors, not no objections. Seems to be in character with the neighborhood. And I did hear from Ms. Quarles. Um, she did call me the other day. Mm -hmm. um, she just didn't understand the letter, so I explained it to her, but she didn't have any problems. So I told her if she had any problems, she could tell me to send me a letter. Do you feel moved to make a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve the conditional use permit with a permanent foundation. It's a conditional rezoning. Conditional rezoning, excuse me. Uh, but with a permanent foundation, what else would we require? It's specific only to a, sing or a double wide manufactured right. home. So you see it? If you want to, two years from now, or three years from now, put up a mega apartment complex, you got to come back and get that design. Okay. You'd have to take that conditional. Okay. So, approve the conditional rezoning subject to the stated conditions. Is there a second? All in favor, please say aye. 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 And just so you know, there'll be another round of letters going out for the, this, uh, the planning commission makes a recommendation and we'll get another round of letters for the actual council meeting that will be on July 15th. Okay. We don't have a chance to speak at that social group, uh, but we should be able to wrap it up on July 15th. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know if going to kill me, but I'm going to take yeah. two minutes of your time. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow morning we're meeting with the uh, uh, tomorrow morning we're meeting with Summit Engineering and Summit Engineering is a consultant that's going to help us redo a zoning ordinance. And you're right, Jennifer's got all the information. She could redo the zoning ordinance, but there is so much that goes on in the General Assembly about gaming machines, marijuana use, all those things that have changed since the last time we do it. Really, the main part of it, Jennifer's got the information. And, uh, we can't do the map because we don't have a plotter big enough. But really, w what we want to do more than anything is to make sure what we're doing is compliant with any code changes or state code changes that have come up. Things like gaming machines, things like marijuana. We had that uh, 420 events that were being advertised in town, and we just want to make sure that we haven't, because the last time we updated, we cleaned up several things about uh, uh, adult care facilities, uh, the, the modular home or the manufactured home double wide replacement single wide but these are the kinds of things we want to make sure that the state's activities over the past four or five years are fully codified in our ordinance. That seems very prudent. Well I don't want to be the guy standing in front of you going oops <laughs> <laughs> on camera. So that's what's going to be good. Okay. Uh, yep you're all done. I don't. Okay. Can you give me the rules? Yeah. Okay. Last two items uh, they have started so you know they've cleared sites for four duplexes. Four duplexes. You guys saw the subdivision plat on Maven Avenue. Right. They poured the foundations for two of them and are laying the block on one of them today. So there'll be that. one, two, three, four. So there'll be eight total units on Maven Avenue. Um, and the last item I have is that um, we have some concept plans, um, and that's what they are at this point. Uh, but the lot next to uh, Flip In. Right. We've done done the calculations and yard requirements and all that, and the current intended use would be five townhouses on this lot. Okay. Townhouses are permissible in our two districts, but it would be five townhouses, which are it can be two story, but it can't be units on top of each other. There's five of them. Also, there's some property on uh, Forest Drive as well that has been sold at an auction sale at the corner of MacArthur Drive and Forest Drive, and it is. Uh, Pretty big piece of property. I don't know if you've given the Is that or Doug's or property? It is Doug's Doug property. Andrews. Doug Remember Doug who used to work at Feldman? Yeah. Off the White House? Yeah, yeah. The current concept plan 
nothing more than a concept plan. They haven't seen drawing, they haven't seen scope. But again, that's an R2 district and they would be permissible for as many as six townhouses in the district. Oh, wow. That is not on town record. That is on town record. I'm just trying to imagine the dynamics going on if we squeeze the five townhouses into one lot. I was shocked how big it was when they tore the house down, how huge that lot was. It's 240 feet deep. Excuse me, let me get that correct. It's 226 feet deep. By 100 feet wide. To replace one house that cost $5,000. What's happening at the old Fidelity Bank? I don't have that information. I don't know. I know he would love for the town to use, for the treasurer's office to use the drive through in that bank portion, but council was not inclined to use any part of it. So at this point, we're no further along. I dare say something's going to come, but I anticipate these projects and maybe an avenue happening before any big resolution happens over there. If you have any questions about any of these development projects or what's going on, the ones on Church Street appear to be finishing up. They did the yards. There's two duplexes on Church Street where the old funeral home used to be that have been nearly complete. I haven't signed a uh, uh, final occupancy permit, but I went out there today and drove by, and they've got grass seed down and gravel and all that sort of thing. So, And then there's another single-family home where they've dug the foundation or dug the footers on uh, also on Church Street uh, at the intersection of Green and Church. There's intended to be two homes in that vacant lot, and one of them they've pulled a permit, and daggone if they didn't dig the footer. Uh, I don't know if they poured the footer, but they certainly have dug it over the weekend. Okay. What's the timeline on the town shop plan? I think you were looking at probably an August open. I haven't been in there, gosh, in several months, but he said late summer, so I'm saying August, maybe it's September, but I think they're moving forward. So that'll be 25 units, and I think they'll be focused more towards the FASC community. The brewery, the brewery part, I don't think he's going to open that anytime soon. I don't get the, the feel that he's going to do it himself. Now, I think he would renovate and lease it to somebody or do something, but... I just don't get the jab from Mr. McCormick that he's going to move forward with that part. No, I don't think that's going to happen. I think the, the residential side will happen. I was the most brick building. excited about that tasting room concept. Yeah, yeah it would be kind of cool. <laughs> but I, um, you know, I don't know what the restaurant business or the, I, you know, I don't know it well enough. But uh, uh, I think Mr. McCormick just said, you know, I've got enough things going on. I don't know if I need to open up another brewery. Yeah, the underground part. The underground part is going to be apartments. No, the part that's going to be that was intended to be the brewery is the cinder block old mechanic shop, not the brick building, but there's a cinder block building closest to the water tank. Oh, yes. That was where he was going to do this tasting room because it wasn't very big and it was going to be like a little package plant and all that. So um, I think I have not heard him say he's ready to, to we had step the off fellow and do this. Busky the Cider from Richmond. Apartments. There's 25 one-bedroom efficiency-style apartments. But he was not particularly. Um, Brick building and the Quonset-style hut. Yep. Yeah, I remember that. Yep. Um, any other questions? Anything going on in town that concerns you or enlightens you or that you have questions about? Well, seem to be bumping along. Right. When, you know, the Board of Zoning Appeals did approve two uh, front setback variances on Rolling Acres Lane, which is the that subdivision where he's been slowly building houses. Uh, Rock River's been building homes, and he's got a home under construction now, right at the very entrance in front of the Yorks, mm -hmm. and then two further back in the cul-de-sac. And because of the location, you're on DVA, you know, because of the location of the storm detention ponds, they they were two issued. I think he's going to try to sell that one, and he's also building one on um, the Beach Cliff. Beach Cliff. Down at the end of Beach Cliff, he's got a permit to build one down there, too. At the very end of Beach Cliff, uh, on the right-hand side, there was actually a cul-de-sac that was going to be in there with six lots, and he asked to drop it down to three lots because he didn't want to build a public street. 
That's why. He built one that kind of backed up to where the... These houses... Joe Alman's uh, stepson. Yeah, yeah kind, of, kind of back in there. Yeah. And I think they've sold that. Yeah. I think they've sold that thing. And um, so there's three lots in there, and he's gotten a permit to do the second home because I think he's sold the first one or he's rented it or whatever he's doing, but there's not a for sale sign on it anymore. It'd be interesting to know where the people are coming from that are buying these houses. I don't I mean, know. It would be interesting to take a survey. I don't know. Mm -hmm. From what localities they're actually coming because mm -hmm. – Logically, I can't figure it out. Mm -hmm. I can't figure out why these people appear. So anyway, it'd be interesting. It's good management, I think, is what they're here. Is that what it is? And they need it's good town work. management. Well, that's a good thing. They do need to work. They do. <laughs> Found that out. Yeah. <laughs> but seriously, I mean. Yeah. Um, the absorption rates are not astronomical, but mm -hmm. I think they're absorbing enough on these, these, these homes that he's. Continue one, build one, sell one. Build yeah. One. Very good. And how many townhouses have we got going up? All of a sudden, take a guess. There's 11 that you haven't seen ground broken on. And, and you've uh, got some that they've already. I guess what I'm thinking is it's a lot of. I th the duplexes are kind of the hot number right now. So you've got four that are coming online on church, and you'll have an additional eight on Maven. Very good, then. Yeah, the market turns Shall out. adjourn. Motion. Thank you. Yes, right. Just see you. Yeah. Well,